This video will demonstrate how to use the main functions of the Rebus tool and focus on first how to calculate the sample size of your survey, then how to include risk factors and convenience sampling, and third how to calculate the confidence level of a survey that has already been carried out. So let's get started. Rebus is a free online tool and can be accessed using any web browser. For this video we're using Google Chrome. To go to the Rebus tool, you can type in the website address in the address bar or just search EFSA Rebus from any online search engine. If you're new to Rebus and want to access the tool for the first time, you need to register as a user by clicking here. The registration process is easy to complete and takes only a few minutes. You will then be able to log in with your email address and password to use the Rebus tool. After signing in, and once you've selected the Rebus tool, you can see the default view of Rebus. From the drop down menu here, you can now choose what would you like to estimate. Let's start with calculating the sample size of a survey. To calculate the sample size, it's necessary to set the survey parameters as inputs for the tool. The minimum information required is the desired confidence level, the design prevalence of the survey, the size of the target population, and the method sensitivity. Let's try to fill in these parameters using an example. Let's say we want to carry out a survey and our population size is 10,000, our target confidence level is 95% with a design prevalence of 1%, and the combined method sensitivity is 75%. When we now click on submit, the tool will automatically calculate the sample size, which in this case is 393. So in conclusion for such a survey, we can say that if you sample 393 plants out of the total 10,000, and if they all test negative, you will be 95% confident that if the pest is present, the true prevalence is less than 1%, given that the detection method, combining sampling and testing, can detect an infected sample 75% of the time. Rebus also allows you to introduce risk factors to the calculation. This can be done from the Risk Factors tab here. Then there are some additional parameters you need to insert into the tool. First, you can select the number of risk factors in the survey area. You should also be able to estimate the number of risk levels for each risk factor, as well as the relative risk of the risk levels and the proportion of the target population to which the relative risk applies. Let's try an example. We can continue with the same survey parameters that we have already inserted. In this example, we have one risk factor, which is the distance from a risk location. It is possible to name the risk factor accordingly. We can now choose the number of risk levels for the risk factor. In this case, we'll consider three levels, high risk, medium risk, and our baseline. The relative risk for the high risk level is three times higher than the baseline risk. For the medium risk level, it is twice as high. So we can insert three, two, and one here. The proportion of the whole population with high risk is 10%, with medium risk 30%. The last proportion of the risk levels, which in our case is the baseline, can be inserted manually or by pressing complete risk proportions. Now we can press submit. By introducing a risk factor into the calculation, the total sample size has now dropped from 393 to 361, and these samples have been divided between the three risk levels. The group sensitivity in this case for each risk level is about 63%, which combined will give the overall confidence of 95% that we wanted to achieve. It's also possible to knowingly allocate more or less survey effort risk levels. In Rebus, this can be done using the convenient sampling functionality. Let's say we want to allocate twice as much sampling effort to the high risk level compared to the baseline. 
From the results, we see that focusing more on the population with high risk level further reduced the total sample size to 256. With this approach, we get a higher confidence in some risk levels and lower in others to achieve the desired target confidence of 95%. Now let's take a look at how to calculate the confidence level of a survey that has already been implemented. First, we need to choose global and group sensitivity from the drop-down menu here. Let's try an example. We can again use the same survey parameters as before. Population size 10,000, method sensitivity 75% and design prevalence 1%. Now let's say we've carried out the survey and taken 100 samples. We can see that while using our survey parameters, Sampling 100 trees corresponds to 53% confidence. If we now introduce risk factors as before, and let's say we took twice as many samples from the population with high risk level than from the medium risk level or baseline, we can see that sampling 100 trees now corresponds to 68% confidence instead of 53. And that concludes this tutorial video. For further information, you can find the manual for Rebus here. We hope you found this video useful. Thank you very much for watching.